In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the methods behind Monte Carlo simulation. I'm going to walk through several very basic probability distributions, and then finally I'm going to talk about some of the primary choices you need to make when you perform this type of simulation. In Monte Carlo simulation, you assume one or several variables are random variables, meaning that they can take many different values. You assign a probability distribution to each input and randomly generate numbers for that input based on the probability distribution. The output of this simulation will depend on the input values. You repeat this simulation many times. I often use 10,000 simulations as my default, and the result of this Monte Carlo simulation is a histogram of outcomes for your output variable. Monte Carlo simulation has many uses in the real world. When you hear that a sports analyst ran simulations to determine which team would win the NBA Finals, they're likely using Monte Carlo simulation. This type of simulation can also be used to predict election results. For example, this MIT researcher used Monte Carlo simulation to predict the results of the 2004 election. He ran 100,000 simulations using polling data and created this histogram. Unfortunately, he found that he could not say with any degree of statistical certainty that either George W. Bush or John Kerry would win the election. Other researchers and analysts use Monte Carlo simulation to predict performance in sports. In one example, a researcher named Carter Bully uses data from basketballreference.com to run a regression of points on various factors that could affect points per game. He uses the regression coefficients in his model to predict the points per game scored by NBA player Nick Young. He treats Nick's minutes per game as a random variable and assigns a normal distribution to it. He then simulates Nick's minutes per game and uses the simulated value to predict Nick's points per game 10,000 times. The results are the histogram that you're looking at right now. Finally, there are many analysts and statisticians who use Monte Carlo simulation when they gamble. They might try to predict the spread of a game, the total points scored, or some other factor that can be bet on. This is a paper in which three Stanford researchers use simulation to predict the final scores of baseball games. They use only information available before the start of the game, and they find that they can predict scores better than the over-under lines set by casinos in Las Vegas. The over-under is the total points or runs scored in a game by both teams. In finance, we can use simulation to predict stock prices. We assume the return is a random variable that follows a normal or log-normal distribution and has a certain mean and standard deviation. We can also use simulation to predict the return or the VAR of a portfolio. For this, we assume an expected return and volatility for each asset in the portfolio, and we might also assume that certain assets' returns are correlated. For VAR, we then identify the first or fifth percentile of the simulated histogram. Finally, we can use simulation in valuation models by treating the input variables as random variables. We then identify a mean and standard deviation, and then we simulate values for each variable and record the intrinsic value. We create a histogram of intrinsic values and then compare this with the current market price of the firm's stock. Now let's dive deeper into the use of simulation in valuation work. You've already seen how to build a two-stage DCF model. We identify input data including predicted values. Our model allows us to forecast the intrinsic value. In Monte Carlo simulation, we identify a few variables that could vary following a probability distribution. For each simulation, we'll get a different intrinsic value. The entire simulation process for valuing common equity has four steps. The first step is to build a model that you believe is appropriate. You can use Excel to build this model, or you can use statistical software like R. Next, you need to specify the variables that you'll simulate. Once you've identified those variables, you need to determine the appropriate distribution and statistics for the simulation. Once this is done, you can perform the simulations. There are several packages to assist you in this. In a statistical package like R or RStudio, simulation is very easy. There are also add-ons like At Risk that you can use in Excel. However, you can also just use the base version of Excel in simulation work, and that's what we'll do. Finally, 
Once you have your simulation results, you'll want to plot a histogram and compare the simulated intrinsic values to the market price of the stock. Now, there are many probability distributions that you can use for your random variables. In most of your investment career, you've likely only used a normal distribution or a log normal distribution. However, there are many, many other distributions like the gamma, Poisson, uniform, beta, and exponential distributions. There are two primary ways that you can determine the appropriate distribution for each variable. You can either plot the values of the random variable and match the histogram of those values to a distribution, or you could use some statistical tests that allow you to determine whether or not your variable's outcomes differ from those of some probability distribution. There are tests like the Komolgorov Smirnov test, for example. For our purposes, examining the histogram will do. Once you select the distribution you want to use, you need to identify at least the mean and standard deviation. You'll use these to simulate values across the distribution. If we use a normal distribution, we often assume a distribution is not skewed and is mesokurtic. Skewness refers to the amount of the probability distribution on one side of the mean, while kurtosis refers to the fatness of the tails. Assuming that our distribution is not skewed and has tails as fat as the normal distribution allows us to simplify the formula we use in simulation. So let's take a look at some distributions, expected returns, and standard deviations our random variables could take. I use Stata to plot these distributions. Incidentally, Stata is another software package you could use to perform Monte Carlo simulation. Here, I have two normal distributions, one with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1, the other's mean and standard deviation are 1 and 2. Both of these are possible distributions I could fit to my random variable. Here are two additional examples, this time of log normal distributions. Notice that as I change the mean and standard deviation, the probability distribution shifts. We want to identify the probability distribution that best describes our data. To determine the appropriate distribution for our random variable, we want to examine the historical values the variable has taken and make an informed decision about the values the variable could take in the future. Here's an example of a uniform distribution. If we plotted the values of one of our inputs and found that each outcome was nearly equally likely, then we would want to model the random variable using a uniform distribution like this. If I examine the prior values of a random variable and I saw this, I would absolutely not want to use a normal distribution in simulation work. However, if I created a histogram of the past observations of the random variable and I found it plotted like a normal distribution, like this, I could fit a normal distribution to the data. That's exactly what I've done here. I've plotted a standard normal distribution where my mean is zero and my standard deviation is 1. Once you've identified the distribution you want to use and the software you want to use, you need to create the random variables. In Excel, the best way to do this is using the equals rand function. This function provides a randomly generated number between 0 and 1. The probability of each outcome follows a uniform distribution, so every value between 0 and 1 is equally likely. We can insert this rand function into a probability distribution using the equals norm.inv function. This function asks you for the value, which in this case is our random variable, the mean, and the standard deviation. Once it has all three of these components, it will provide you a randomly generated output following a normal distribution. So let's summarize. Monte Carlo simulation is used in a variety of fields, not just investments. We use it when we want to see the likelihood of future outcomes. To perform your simulation, you need to specify a probability distribution for each input variable based on the likely outcomes for that variable. You can use one of many different packages to perform this. Excel, R, and Stata are my favorites. And so with that, I'm going to conclude. But if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me via email or by phone. Thank you very much.